Saturday morning. I'm about to do a shave. I'm about to do a shave with three razors which I've resurrected from the dead. Here is the beautiful Puma 22, which I spent uh, about a day and a half working on. This has been reground, polished, all the dings taken out of it, all the awful honeware which some but he had put on it, not me, but somebody in the past. All that's been removed. Uh, the broken scale has been uh, mended. Uh, the whole thing's been repinned. It's a very curious design though, isn't it? It's got these little round, turned, ivory, ivoried uh, discs that keep the razor apart. It comes in a cardboard box because it's quite old. Anyway, here's three days uh, three days of stubble on me. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of pre-shave stroke shave cream from Pure Shave. A gentleman in London who makes his own recipe for squirty shaving cream, which actually works very, very well. I'm not going to use this one exclusively today. I thought I'd go posh and use something special. As today's a special day. This is a celebration day. This is um, just an experiment on my part, but until you've actually restored and shaved with your own razor, buying razors is easy peasy. Actually doing them up and shaving with them is another level of pleasure. And this uh, I'm very happy with now. Um, I stropped it this morning. I was too tired last night. And it hanging hair tested like a laser. So I've got great expectations. Also, from some previous work I've done, I've also got a little beauty here. This is an Eric Anton Berg, beautiful little Swedish 4 8 razor. Very high quality steel. And this one I've only just tested. And this one is now fully restored. And that HHT as well. And last but not least, I'm assuming this is Sheffield, actually, no idea. It's the cigar brand. And this one I had a lot of trouble with. Uh, I think it's a, a Sheffield razor. It's got a little lead wedge. So it's probably fairly early turn of the century, last century. But this one had a very, very dodgy edge. So I've actually put that one on a diamond plate and actually squared it off. So now this one's on a 20K edge. The Eric Anton Berg is on a 20k edge. And the little Puma 22, that's on a 12k edge. But all a superb early steel. And um, I'm going to have a great deal of pleasure shaving with them. I hope this will be of interest to people. Martin de Condre. Martin de Condre. Posh soap. So I'm going a bit mad today. I'm going to indulge myself with posh soap after a sort of limited pre-shave. I won't whack on too much because uh, I want to get on and shave. So it's a bit of a sort of a bipolar shave. <laughs> so we've got a bit of pure shave, so sort of shave gel as a pre-shave and Martin de Condre posh soap which I should keep referring back to. Anyway, let's get some of this on and get moving. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank so much for people that have helped me, particularly Gary Haywood, as you know, is a master when it comes to honing and we have the same taste in razors. Um, Jacques Dapachets in South Africa, now he does wonderful instructional videos and uh, I would say has a lot to teach us all. Um, obviously Dr. Matt, Dr. Matt Robbins, uh, his YouTube videos and instructional videos are an absolute essential. Kim Mathias, now Kim is uh, English, builds razors, does restoration, 
Now here's one of the very first people that got me interested in straight razor shaving. Matty Lindstrom. Now Matty is a, a character and uh, I watched one of his how to hone a good quality Swedish razor and uh, yeah he's a master. Um, so really there's yes, loads I haven't mentioned but for inspirational videos there's even more. Um, Sergio Bandafrito in California and uh, I own some of his razors I'm very pleased to say and he's um, unfortunately stopped making them so if you're watching this Sergio, Serge get off your ass and do some bloody videos man. Anyway let's try first and foremost da -da, with the Puma which uh, I've done quite a few little videos on how to restore and hone. Anyway, let's see how this one works. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. This is on pretty stiff stubble, as you can hear. Yeah, I'd happily lend this to anybody to shave with. Now this one, which I only honed yesterday, last night, this one's on a 12K. Everybody raps on about how good, look at all that mess. Ugh. Everyone goes on about how good 12K is. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I went straight from 8K, super white, straight on to um, 12K, and it seems to work very, very well, but, yeah, pretty good. Certainly, that has restored this lovely early Puma. Now it's got a mirror finish. And shades very very well. Anyway, as a counter blast, let's try the little baby one. This is the Eric Anton Berg, which um, Swedish steel, very high grade Swedish steel. Yeah, that's a different feel. I've got to say, I'm not as happy with little baby razors. I do find they're a little bit more fiddly. It's good steel. It's a deep hollow blade. It's had obviously quite a few honings over the, the years. I'm assuming that it's at its full depth of blade. It's quite a lovely little razor, but I'm just not totally in love with the size. Four eighths and very thin. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. It's a bit like holding and shaving with a, a toothpick. It's sort of, but very, very light. And let's see what it's like on the moustache as a comparison. I don't think it's as good as the Puma. Oh, it's very delicate. And this is a, a first pass against pretty heavy stubble, so maybe I'm being a little bit cruel, expecting a very fine grade, very thin razor to chop through three days of my barbed wire. It's more difficult to judge the angle with a very, very small blade. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, I'd certainly give that a pass. That's very good, I'm very happy with that. But let's now try my naughty little Sheffield. I'm assuming it's a Sheffield. I'd be very happy if any guys or anybody out there 
can tell me differently. I'm assuming this is a Sheffield. It could be German. Could be American. I don't know. But it's the cigar brand. And it's just got on the tang a picture of a cigar. With written above it, just the cigar brand. No other signs at all. But it's a lovely little razor. Let me do a Jacques water. See if I can get a little bit more hydrated lava. I'm famous for being crap on scents and crap on lava. Yeah, that's better. Doesn't smell much. This is uh, Martin de Candre. This is a very kind uh, a gift from Gary. Thank you, Gary. Anyway. Always a good idea to wipe your fingers after you've been lathering. Otherwise you're going to slip. You don't want to slip with one of these because this is a little beast. So I'm going to go against the grain because I know I've refined the edge on this one. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, against the grain, that's beautiful. I'll go one stroke across. Mmm, nice. This little devil has come up very, very well. This was uh, a 15 pounds, that's 15 pounds English money razor off eBay. And I rate it now as a 500 pound uh, razor. Oh, uh, that's amazing. I would say a very, very good experiment. It did take an awful lot of work. Not 100% comfortable, it's a square point, which is nice, but um, for trimming, this is a sort of, I don't know what you call this, about a 5 8 but very stiff. It was very hollow ground. And when I was hanging here testing it, it was pinging. But the true test of a hanging hair test is the deadly but silent. I won't wish her on too long about testing. But I would honestly say that when you come to test on the hanging hair test, as I've said before, in the normal direction, an old sharp bread knife or hanging hair test. My test is to go uh, against and for, against and into the grain of the hair so that the little follicles, little whatever you call them, scales, scales. So the scales of the hair are actually going in one direction and then the other. You'll notice quite a difference when you do that. And I won't shave with anything unless it can do both. So that's the second pass of the little cigar brand, which I assume to be a Sheffield. Now this, um, both of those were on uh, 20K Suhiru, and that's a very, very fine stone. I'm now gonna try Probably a final pass, I'm not gonna bore you to tears. Final pass on my fully restored Puma. Puma 22. 
not going to say it's ever going to be my favourite, but it's an unusual design. And of course, even though it's a German razor, Puma obviously being a German brand, they were always boasting in the early days, made from best Sheffield steel. Because originally, Sheffield steel was the best in the world. Only because we had a unique refining process. We used to team the steel. It was called crucible steel because it was made actually in crucibles. You could just about lift one of these crucibles out of its fiery pit. And as it had a sealed top, it had burnt off and refined all the inside impurities. So one of the big adverts in the Victorian period on Bowie knives, even on pistols, but certainly on razors, was made from cast steel. Because we actually ruled the waves in those days when it came to high-tech steel production. But Sheffield was using, I imagine, its own steel, which is iron ore, not very good grade. Whereas the best in the world, of course, is Swedish. Because Swedish iron ore doesn't have much in the way of sulphur and all the other impurities. Whereas sadly, most of the world's iron ore has got through a very expensive, very high-tech process to get rid of all the impurities. Anyway, that's a little history lesson you didn't need. Yeah. This is a good razor. I think it was worth the effort. It was a little experiment by me to go from what was almost a, a wrecked razor, bought it off eBay. And uh, one of the reasons I, I, I liked the look of it was um, it came in its original card case. And all the early razors, all the early Pumas were card cases. The later ones had those beautiful Plastic cases, but very early plastic. Let me show you the case. Ta da! That is a really early Puma case. And on the back, it's rather illegible, it shows you how to use it and how to maintain your razor. Which I was thought is uh, probably unnecessary, but you never know, as it is now. We're all learning. But for those who are new to straight razor shaving, the reason we do it is because there is no better shave that you can possibly have. This is not me being uh, hyperbolic. This is true. No hyperbole here. You can trim the straight blade far better than anything else. And there's a great feeling of satisfaction. But one of the things which I think people fail to mention on the videos is afterwards, when you've had a BBS shave, a baby bum smooth shave, you spend the rest of the day touching your face thinking, Oh my God, that so, feels so good. Which you don't get with any other razor or any other form of uh, shaving. Yeah, do you know what? I think that's enough. I'm now trying to feel if there's anywhere I've missed and there isn't. So, we've had three razors this morning. Let's pick them up again. Tiny little Eric Anton Berg. Now this is a beautiful little Swedish razor. Only a 4.8, so it's very small. There's your more normal size. That's my uh, freshly restored, very unusual, very high grade Puma. With the beautiful little Puma head in some sort of silver, nickel silver probably. And finally, 
this now totally restored cigar brand. <laughs> Please let me know if you know, because I don't. Is it Sheffield? Is it German? I don't know. Anyway, it's now a very nice little razor. But the winner today has to be the Puma for the simple reason I spent about a day and a half's work on it. And I'm very pleased. It's now a beautiful little razor, fully restored, repinned, invisibly mended, so that uh, the mend on the scale I will put to any test known to man. These are some sort of early, very early gutter percher, uh, baker like celluloid scale. And when they break, uh, they normally that's the end of the razor, unless you make new scales. But look, I've still got the original numbers stamped, they're still there. It's got two high speed steel hardened pins, which have been um, epoxy resined in. And uh, because they're going in the full length of uh, the remaining part of that scale, um, nothing's ever going to break it, ever. So, <laughs> anyway, chaps, thank you so much for watching to my nonsense. Um, this is a bit of a celebration shave today. I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.